With all the twists and turns this show takes, you never know what to expect. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Jane the Virgin moments. The reason the test came back positive is I accidentally inseminated you two weeks ago. You what? Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at the moments from the show that made us laugh, cry, and exclaim, did that really just happen? Cool. We will be talking about major plot points, so consider this your spoiler alert. Wow, looks like they had nothing to worry about. Number 10, Michael rescues Mateo. While Jane is basking in the bliss of Mateo's birth, he is taken from her by a fake nurse and placed into the hands of the crime lord Sinrostro. As soon as Michael gets the terrifying ransom call, he jumps into action to get Mateo back. I need, I need you to listen to me for a second. Are you what listening? is happening? Jane, listen. I need you to clear out the room. I know who has Mateo, and I know how to get him back. Michael risks his life and job for the newborn, but the heartfelt reunion between Mateo and his parents made it well worth it. Give me the baby. Even though Mateo was only gone for 142 minutes, it felt a little too long for Jane and us watching at home. Jane made it to her son. Number 9. Elba is almost deported Elba really feels like all of our abuelas, so when Petra's mother pushes her down a flight of stairs, almost killing her, we were ready to fight. And when the hospital discovered she was an illegal immigrant and were going to stop her care, we were getting our pitchforks ready. We will have to notify ICE and they will deport her to Venezuela. Luckily, Michael swoops in like a knight in shining armor and keeps her in America, armed with his phone and good connections. You saved my grandmother. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. The show does a great job of subtly discussing a hot topic issue like immigration reform, while still taking a firm stance on it and making us feel the emotions that go along with it. That can't be legal! Number 8. Jane Gets a Book Deal Will you read my work and consider me for the 7th showcase slot? After all the ups and downs of Jane's life, the only thing that has been constant is her love of writing, only stopping briefly after Michael's death. Thank you. Okay, so yes, yeah, so, um, we'll be in touch. Her dream has always been to be a published romance author, and it finally comes true when she writes about her love story with Michael, this time giving them a happily ever after. A publisher wants to buy my novel about Michael. Oh my god. Wait, what? <laughs> Even though it's not the greatest book deal ever, it's definitely a step in the right direction and the perfect tribute to Michael and the love they shared. Number 7. Xiomara and Rogelio get engaged again. Good. Zio and Rogelio have had a rather dramatic on and off relationship that started in high school. Despite all the obstacles they faced, the two always seem to find their way back to each other. And life is beautiful and hard and the only thing I know for sure is that I want to go through it all with you. Rogelio has many gifts, but proposing is not one of them. The first time he proposed to Zoe was inside a storage closet and it didn't end very well. So it's a good thing Ziromara takes charge the second time around. She creates a telenovela beach setting, proposes with her father's wedding ring and a beautiful speech. Rogelio de la Vega, will you marry me? Rogelio says yes, creating a perfect season finale moment full of happy tears. Number 6. Inezka puts Petra in a coma Ah yes, the classic evil twin trope that is so popular in the telenovela genre. I do what is necessary to taking good care of Rafael. Under the control of her mother, Inezka, Petra's long-lost twin, disguises herself as Petra, puts her in a coma, and takes her place. Petra has to watch helplessly as Inezka raises her children and lives her life. Thankfully, Petra is eventually saved by Raphael, but hell hath no fury like a Petra scorned. I'm not going anywhere. Inezka. Inezka gets a nice little forehead tattoo to prevent any other incidents. Perfect. And Petra's mother gets the ice-cold shoulder. Number 5. Petra impregnates herself. Petra shows us the dangers of being desperately in love and drunk at the same time. Of course, Petra doesn't do things like drunk texting. Instead, she drunks inseminates herself with a sample of Raphael's sperm. Come on, baby. You know you want me. Said sperm was also taken without Raphael's knowledge and obviously without his consent because no sane man would want his greedy and manipulative ex-wife in charge of his last sperm sample. The scene is both jaw-dropping and funny, and we will never look at turkey basters quite the same way again. A sandwich and the extra turkey baster? Perfect. Number 4. 
Rose is Sin Rostro. One of the many subplots of the show is Michael's hunt for the infamous crime lord Sin Rostro, whose identity remained a mystery in the first half of season one. Come in. Not yet. In a twist no one saw coming, it is revealed that Rose is Sin Rostro when she kills Emilio, her husband, and Raphael's father by drowning him in cement. Even though the clue was in her name, Sin Rostro, she did a good job of throwing us off her trail and even had us convinced that Emilio was the criminal. Rose quickly becomes one of the most hated characters for many, many reasons. Number 3. Jane Loses Her Virginity This moment definitely isn't the climax of the show, but it was certainly a long-awaited moment. Are you ready? Between having a baby, her husband being shot and delaying the whole consummation thing, and after two entire seasons of keeping her oath, it's about time. It's gonna be perfect. Because it's you. Unfortunately, no one's first time is perfect, and Jane ends up faking it under all the pressure, and as well as sending an accidental sex tape to her advisor. We made a sex tape. What? And I sent it to my advisor. Jane and Michael eventually work it out through some trial and error, which is shown by a fantastic animated depiction of the event. Number 2. Michael Dies It should be noted that Jane would play this moment over and over. Just when we think Michael is safe from the dangers of police work, the show rips out our hearts and stomps them into the floor. After surviving being shot by his partner, who turned out to be Rose in disguise, the injury comes back to rear its ugly head. After Michael finishes writing his LSAT, he suddenly collapses and dies from his weakened heart. When Michael first falls to the ground, you think that maybe he's fine. He's come through worse before. He's not breathing. Call 911. But when Jane gets that dreaded phone call from the hospital, her reaction tells us that he is never coming back. Number 1. Jane and Michael get married. It's the moment everyone on Team Michael said finally. For everyone else, it was still a beautiful wedding full of happiness, love, and Bruno Mars. I can't fight back the tears in my eyes. Every single character comes together to make sure it's the perfect wedding, especially Rogelio who planned the entire thing. Even Raphael manages to put his feelings for Jane aside. Good luck. <sighs> you look beautiful. The wedding is full of surprises with Michael giving his vows in Spanish, Jane and Rogelio's upbeat father-daughter dance, and Bruno Mars sings for the couple's first dance. I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss. <laughs> As Rogelio so elegantly puts it, Jane and Michael's wedding is definitely the Super Bowl of weddings. Life for the rest of my life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.